So often I hear people say, oh, I can't have avocados or cheese or dairy because those are too high in fat. Or they talk about foods that are actually really healthy and beneficial for you and act like they should be avoided. So today I'm gonna go through the top 11 of what I think are the most demonized foods, talk about why there's misconceptions about them, and I'm gonna share why you should be actually eating more of them. So let's get started. People think that eggs are bad for you and their first thought is because of the cholesterol when that's actually not the case first off cholesterol is not a bad word it's actually something that's very important to our essential functioning plus eggs are a super power packed food that have so much nutrients and healthy fats in them and they have a lot of health benefits as well they help with your vision they lower the risk of heart disease they increase your metabolism they help stabilize your blood glucose levels and they even help to reduce hormones that make you feel hungry so they help to make you feel full longer throughout the day personally I have eggs every day I have egg whites I have regular eggs and I just have them as much as I can because I love getting that full feeling and I love how much protein is in them so a lot of people avoid olive oil but extra virgin olive oil is very healthy for you it contains antioxidants and fatty acids and vitamins plus it even has anti-inflammatory effects Yes, it is high in calories, but that doesn't equate to being bad for you. It just means you should use it in moderation and get the benefits from it for sure. Full fat dairy is another biggie. A lot of people say, oh, you call for full fat Greek yogurt in there. I don't want to eat that. Can I use low fat? Is that okay? When actually, if you watch my video on is full fat dairy better for you, you already know that full fat dairy is a great option to be eating. If you're not lactose intolerant, of course, having full fat dairy in your diet is a great option for weight loss, for feeling full and for getting all sorts of valuable nutrients. Plus it contains healthy bacteria that helps support your digestive system. So it's really good for your body. So instead of fearing the word full fat, and I know so many of us do because we grew up thinking fat free and low fat is healthy for you. But instead of fearing those words, think of it more as this is nutrient dense. This is gonna have a lot of healthy fats for me. This is gonna have a lot of protein for me. Just like olive oil, coconut oil is a very healthy oil for you. It contains medium chain triglycerides, which reduce your hunger, make you feel fuller, give you extra energy and increase your metabolism. Plus the fatty acids in coconut oil not only help increase your metabolism, they also help you get energy to your body and your brain fast. Coconut oil also helps increase your levels of HDL, which is the good cholesterol. And that is great because it helps reduce your risk of heart disease. So yes, just like any oil, it's gonna be higher in fat and calories, but that just means use it in moderation, but definitely use it. So avocados are like my BFF. <laughs> I have one every day, at least a half of an avocado every day they are so good for you they're so nutrient dense but so many people are afraid of them because of how much fat they contain and that makes me sad so believe it or not avocados have a ton of nutrients and a ton of fiber as well so that means they're really good for your digestive system and they're low in carbs and contain a lot of healthy fat so check out my video on the seven foods I eat every day because you know my avocados are in there all right this one's a biggie and I'm using the word carbs because everybody's afraid of carbs which is kind of silly and let me explain why so carbs are a macronutrient just like fat and protein that make up the calories that are essential for our body functioning. So we need carbs to live. Now, some people, when they hear carbs, they think of pasta and they think of white breads, but carbs are also sweet potatoes and quinoa and strawberries, and people don't usually think of those as carbs, but it's all carbs. So the big issue isn't carbs, it's that we take carbs and we highly refine them into potato chips and candy and fruit juices and prepackaged sweets and high fructose corn syrup in our cereals and we just have so many things that are unnecessarily sweetened with extra carbs that we don't need and those are called empty carbs because they don't provide any nutrient value for you if you eat them but the good carbs in fruits and veggies and grains are all necessary so I think we need to remember that when we hear the word carbs they're not the enemy plus they're a great resource for energy and fiber which are both very valuable all right you guys know I love my coffee I have black coffee every day I have coffee with half and half in it I love me some coffee now there is a level of too much coffee too 
much caffeine, but coffee is actually not a bad thing. It shouldn't be a demonized word. It shouldn't be a guilty pleasure. The problem with coffee is that people add a bunch of sugary creamers into it, which we already talked about with the carbs. That you just don't want all of that highly refined sugars because that provides you no value. But actual coffee, like high quality black coffee or coffee with just a little bit of full fat dairy in it have a lot of nutrient value and have a lot of health benefits for you as well. Like coffee improves your mood, it gives you better thinking, lowers your risk for depression, and also lowers your risk for type two diabetes. So it's a very valuable thing and it shouldn't be demonized. So stop hating on the coffee. Personally, I have at least two cups of coffee every day and I use that for my alertness, for fat burning, for energy, and just to change things up in addition to having my water every day too. Plus coffee helps reduce hunger levels as well. So it's a great thing to have if you're fasting. So nuts and nut butters are super nutrient dense. They're high in fiber. They're high in a bunch of healthy fats and they can be a great source of energy. They're also really good for your heart health. And so while they should be had in moderation, you don't wanna go crazy and eat a ton of them because of how nutrient dense they are, just like oils, they are really valuable to eat and shouldn't be demonized. I usually have at least a tablespoon or two of almond butter or peanut butter in my smoothies so that I have a little bit of that every day. I also love adding nut butters to my yogurt bowls. I spread it on some toast. The problem with nuts is that they often come super super salted or covered in sugar, or you have a nut butter that has a bunch of trans fats and sugar added to it when that's unnecessary. But definitely adding them in daily is a great idea. So chocolate is another really demonized ingredient when it doesn't have to be. Yes, there are certain chocolates like milk chocolates and white chocolates that are really not chocolate. They don't have that high cacao percentage and they don't have the added benefits and the nutrients that an actual dark chocolate has. But dark chocolate is actually really good for you. So chocolate contains something called flavanols and those increase your sensitivity to insulin, which ultimately help reduce the risk of diabetes. Plus they help with your artery functions and they're also a stress reliever. I mean, who doesn't love to enjoy just a little bit of chocolate? I know I do. You just wanna make sure that the chocolate you're choosing has a 75 to 80% cacao percentage. Yes, it's gonna be a bit stronger chocolate, but you're gonna have reduced sugar in that and you're gonna have all sorts of antioxidants and all of those nutritional benefits. Plus, adding in chocolate, like with cacao nibs or dark chocolate morsels, like on a yogurt bowl or something, is just a big win. <laughs> so, especially with the rise of gluten-free options and all of the branding around that, whole grains and grains in general have become very demonized, when they're actually a very positive part of a lot of people's diets. So we already talked about how carbs aren't all bad, right? We have healthy carbs and those provide us with fiber and nutrients. So a whole grain is gonna give you a lot of fiber and some protein as well. So instead of avoiding them entirely, for breads, look for breads that have a minimum of three grams of fiber per slice. Ideally, you'll have more than that. Look for the word whole grain in the ingredients and avoid anything that says bleached or enriched because those are gonna be highly processed. But foods like whole wheat pastry flour, buckwheat, rolled oats and spelt all have really high levels of fiber and they're just very good for your digestive system and not something to be demonized. And if you saw in my what I eat in a day video, you see that I enjoy at least one sandwich every day and that is full of whole grains. Yes, we talked about full fat dairy, but cheese by itself is always thought of as something that's unhealthy. And that's because it does contain a lot of saturated fat. But saturated fats, like I mentioned in my full fat dairy video, are not the enemy. They've actually been proven not to be associated with heart disease. Sure, there is fat in cheese and saturated fat at that, but it also contains vitamins and calcium and healthy fatty acids. Plus, just like with nut butters, cheese can help increase your overall satisfaction of a meal. So if you have cheese on top of something, it has that creamy texture and it just makes it feel fuller and more satisfying. Just like with any of the items on this list, enjoy it in moderation, have it be full fat cheese and you can have all different varieties. Check out my video on the seven foods I eat every day and I'll see you in the next video.